The reverse time loop is now complete. This is living proof that time is not linear, but rather relative, cyclical. I mean, who knows what it could be? Is it even real? Because we have gone from case J to case H and now back to case G. That is not chronological order. That is not alphabetical order. What is going on here? But in all seriousness, guys, I am super pumped to finally have case G in front of you on the review table here to dive on into because of course, long story short, the cases did not come out in order per se, especially in terms of online availability. And as you could see, case G as a full case is still not available to purchase anywhere. I just fortunately was able to kind of scavenge and gather, hunt and gather all the cards together to show you here in one spot. I just completed it like a week ago. And so I finished the case H reviews and figure it's time to move backwards onto <laughs> case G. So welcome back to another Mr. Docket production. Obviously we have the case J, not case J, the case G review, not unboxing. I will be reviewing Kelly Beanbright soon and then Pit Stoposaurus and then the Tokyo Mater variants from this case as well. I already did Rumbler Mater because he was in case J. So check out that review in the description below and card suggestion pop up in the top right hand corner. Before we get into this, I do want to shout out Get Me Collectibles. He has the half version of this case in stock for sale. So if you want to get a taste of it, which includes almost everything you see, it's actually one of the best half cases ever. You should definitely hit him up via email. And he also has a bunch of stuff on his eBay store from this case. I say that because looking ahead toward the half cases of H and J, they are pretty bad. Like the half case H doesn't have Jeremy, doesn't have Cryptid Buster Mater. So, I mean, what really is the point, right? Whereas this one actually has all of the stuff that you see here. And fun little story, which you'll see eventually in the next episode of The Hunt, I found Kelly Beanbright at Walmart hidden. Someone freaking hit it on me and I just bloodhounded it out of the shelves. I just found it via instinct and it's actually really cool and really special to me because in all seriousness guys, I have not found a car that I haven't had. Let me rephrase that. I have not found a 155 scale. No, oh my God, that doesn't make sense. I have not found a 155 scale die cast that I didn't already have in my possession in a physical store in a long time. And you guys might be thinking that's no, no way. You find stuff all the time in your hunt videos. Yes, but most of that stuff is to keep in the package or just to show you guys. Because I get all the cases very early usually, like case J and H I got pretty early compared to everything. But of course, because G is not available, I had to resort to the stores. And so yeah, I was very excited to find Kelly. Everything else I did have already. And I guess you can count these as you know technically new as well. But they are just variants. So Kelly was truly special to me because she's a new character. But we're not going to get to them right off the bat. We're going to start with all the duplicates in this case. I have the whole list printed off here. And that's what we're going to go off of. Now, there are a couple cars in this case that I don't have physically just because I'd have to dive into the abyss of storage, and I'd rather not do that. So I will just read them off to you guys here. Let's see what we have. So not shown today are two Road Trip Lightning McQueens, but the later variant, the earlier one, I should say, the old one, the one that doesn't have the new spile, so it's kind of upsetting. And I also don't have the Ramon to show you guys which is just the purple version from last year, a carryover, and nor do I have K-Pillar Giraffe, which is also a carryover from last year. So all three of the cars that I don't have are carryovers from last year, so I really don't think it matters all that much. But we do have, we do have one Finn McMissile yet again in the case. He debuted in case D, and this is a new variant of him that debuted in case D, not the Palace Danger Shouting one that we've come accustomed to getting over the last few years, whether it be in that Amazon 5 pack or a single in 2020. So this is really nice to see, and I will be doing a review on him soon as well, just waiting for everything to kind of calm down before I start reviewing some more of these variant type items like Fimic Missile here, like Lee Revkins. They will all get reviews, I promise you guys, but not right away. Kelly Beanbright, Pit Stoposaurus, they all take president. So yeah, Fimic Missile is in this case. We also have 
one of Fillmore, and it is the new card of him on this darker red packaging, which looks pretty good. I love how it accentuates the car in the blister here because of the contrast, or at least on Fillmore it does. And it's also great to see, again, a classic 2006 character and its artwork featured on present day merchandise. It's a nice kind of like then and now comparison moment. Same thing applies to like all these ones you see here on the back. Mater, Ramon, Sally, McQueen, and King. Of course, that dirt track Doc Hudson is a little bit newer, but still a classic character. So yeah, you have one Fillmore. You also have one Noah Gocek, which I know quite a few people should be excited about. He debuted in case B this year, the first case. It's nothing new, not a new variant, not a new character, but it is his first time being released in the last few years since 2020 so i'm sure a lot of people will jump on him it took me a while to find him actually it's kind of annoying like whenever i found case b at target or meyer he'd be gone but eventually i did find him i think i showed you guys that in the last episode of the hunt on the back here you have a slew of other great cars three characters fair game jet robinson rich mixon and pushover who's looking like he might be canceled this year despite obviously being shown on the card back here so that would really stink but we will see how it plays out. Maybe he'll come in. Surprise, surprise. All right. There is one Lee Revkins in this case. So yeah, like I said, this is another one that I will be reviewing. One of the few Thailand variants of Piston Cup Racers I haven't done a video on yet. And he's not great. He's actually, <laughs> I think a lot of people deem him one of the worst variants of a Piston Cup Racer from Thailand. But eh, he doesn't look horrible. Maybe the one from 2019 is a little bit worse. But this looks pretty good, although it doesn't have the purple trim around the wheels that it should. But I don't think it looks bad, at least right now. I don't think it looks too bad. So there is one of him in the case. There's also one of regular old Lightning McQueen on the new redder packaging. Again, looks nice to see a classic character featured on this new card. And everything on the back here is the same. But it is weird also. The fact that this card back looks nice and full as it should. And then Fillmore had that like ghost spot. You guys see the empty spot right there. It just makes no sense whatsoever why they didn't put Sarge right there. Sarge really should be right there. Right there. So, I don't know. One of the many mysteries that Mattel has put upon us. All right, we have then, speak of the devil. Dirt Track, Fabulous Hudson Hornet, looking really good. I only have one of him in the package. This guy's going to be pretty rare this year. So if you see him, definitely snag him. And they are doing the regular dock this year in a single, whereas last year he was in the two-pack with Cruz and McQueen. And that one's not as rare. Definitely not going to be as rare as this. So definitely delineate in your mind between the two of them. If you see this one, consider picking it up. If you see the other one, I mean, it's up to you, but it's not as special as this one here, which debuted technically in 2017. They finally add the dirt to his paint job and then switched over to Thailand in 2019 in a two pack with Jet Robinson, who is also released as a single this year. So good stuff. They're friends, probably. Him and Leroy are not, <laughs> as we saw in the movie. All right, we have another spy. It's great. It's actually really sick that Holly Schiffel and Finn are in the same case. You probably couldn't say that. I mean, maybe in 2020 they were, but it was the variants of Finn, so you can kind of thread the needle there. I don't know. It'd be sick if you could say Finn McMissile and Holly Schiffel have not been released together in a case since 2012. Like, that would just be so cool to say, but who knows? I'll have to do some research on that. But yeah, this is the Amazon 5-pack variants of her that came out a couple years ago in the Cars 2 starter pack. So it's the more accurate shade of purple or pink or magenta or whatever you want to call it because the 2020 version of her is like a hot pink, which is obviously not accurate. The Electroshock version from 2016 is a hot pink as well. Dumb. And the original version of her is a darker purple, which suffice for many, many years. But it does appear that they finally, finally got it down to almost correct. Now, it's kind of strange here on the back because... It shows you Cars 2 characters that came out last year and this year. So it's like, was she supposed to be released last year? Like, what's going on here? This is confusing as all get out. Like, Jeff Corvette is a 2023 release. 
Raul Cerule 2023 release, Finn 2023, but all these other ones, although Suki has been reissued this year, so she gets a pass, but technically Francesco and Ramon have not been reissued in 2013. 2013 2023 packaging that artist ramon right there they just call him ramon green and then you have sheriff who you know is just one of those every year type characters but yeah this is kind of like a hybrid card back between 2022 and 2023 so something to definitely keep in mind and something fun to mention to you guys all right next up we have a markedly 2023 release of tim treadless here Looks really good. I love the artwork for him. I've loved it ever since it debuted in 2020. And yeah, he looks pretty good. Of course, he's got the brighter orange now from Thailand instead of the dark orange from China. Nice black wheels. Just looking good, man. He just looks good. And on the back here, Jet Robinson, Tailgate. Rest in peace, Pushover. Leroy, Paul, Ryan, and Noah. So a lot of next-gen action here for sure. A lot of Thunder Hollow action and <laughs> retro racer. I mean, you just can't escape the racer realm. That's kind of what I love about Cars on the Road is that it introduced so many new facets to Mattel to pull from for their die-cast pool, I guess you could say, what they decide to release. Because there was a point where like 90% of any new car that came out over the last few years was a racer of some sort, whether it be Thunder Hollow, whether it be the 1950s retro Piston Cup, whether it be Next Gen, Cars 3 Stock Car, Cars 1 Stock Car, Cars 3 Tractor. It's like, God, man, what the hell? Give us a breather. And now, of course, everything's much more balanced because you have some racers. They don't really do Cars 3 Stock Cars anymore. They aren't doing tractors currently. And then we have Clowns and Dinosaurs and... Just some basic type cars in the mix as well. I think they started doing that last year a little bit with, you know, Revney Griante, Dana Crankoff, Colin Rev, Keith Cohn. That was a lot. I mean, there weren't many great releases, but the ones that they did put out were really good in my opinion. And so, yeah, that's what I like about Cars on the Road is that everything you get, like look at the stuff in front of you. It's very diverse, very diversified, whereas I think they struggled with that heavily over the last few years since Cars 3 came out. And we do have May Pillar Derev in this case, who is, of course, one of the ring leaders, ring masters, whatever you would call it, from Circus Velocitas, along with K Pillar Derev, who's also in this case, but of course I didn't show you guys him, or her, rather. But yeah, I liked May a lot, but she is definitely not beloved by many, because she is one of the easiest cars to find, in my opinion, out right now. Like, when Walmart got this case in, if you didn't find May Pillar Derev, you didn't find anything from case E. Because Deputy McQueen would go, Rich Mixon would go, Cave McQueen would eventually go, some of the red card backs would go, and then May Pillar Derev would just be like, hey, I'm still here. And then Target got in case E, and all the good stuff goes, but then the couple May Pillar Derevs they have are still there. And it's really sad because I like her a lot. I have a fondness for her because, of course, if you guys remember, I got her early along with Deputy and Cave McQueen's. And so I am a big fan of her. She's a little bit small, probably not worth the $5 at Target, so I guess that's fair. But she has a nice design, and yeah, it is a little sad that she doesn't sell as well as most characters. I mean, she's definitely, if they include like one more of her in the case, I mean, she would peg warm real bad. But that is all I have for you guys in terms of the re-releases in this case that you already have seen before in previous cases. Now, on to the new stuff, quote unquote. And we're gonna start with the most boring of the new items, and that is Muddy Lightning McQueen, who technically is Muddy Rusty's Racing Center Lightning McQueen. Now this guy has been released many times now, first in 2020, then he got like a five pack release that's actually a variant because it's from Vietnam and he's smiling, which is just weird and doesn't make any sense at all. And then I think he got another single release maybe in 2021, and now he is back in 2023. So it's his first time being released here on the Red Riders packaging. They didn't do the dark red, which is just doesn't make sense, super inconsistent, but hey, whatever. I did find this one at Walmart, not on the best of cards, but hey, I'm just grateful to have found it. And it was actually hiding as well. There were three cars that were hiding, Kelly Beanbright, this one and Patoka, 
were literally guys i will show you in the hunt i really shouldn't spoil it but i'm just so overcome with excitement that i have to tell you guys i was upset i was upset because i found i thought remnants of case g i was like oh drift party mater rumbler mcqueen pit stop of source i mean yeah that's fun and all but i already have those two from case j like i like i said here i already have pit stop of source and rumbler mcqueen loose Drift Party Mayor is cool, but it's a variant. I want Kelly Beanbread. Like, that's a brand new character I don't have yet at all. And I was sniffing around because it felt like if someone were to buy Kelly Beanbright, they would have bought these two as well. Because while I had them, Case J is only available from like one online reseller. So the chance of the random person in my town having Case J as well and leaving those is very low. So I thought there's a chance that these are hanging around somewhere just not in the proper spot and i go sniffing around like i said and then i just sniffed them out you know i just found them down below behind a couple items and just took care of business guys i mean you just can't hide new cars from me i mean i don't know what the person was thinking very foolish rookie mistake should have hid them better i mean they were <laughs> decidedly hidden it's not like they just happened down below and they just happened to be down there no they were like bundled up like they were like this Like they were all like this, like someone clearly put them down there in that formation. And I was like, yeah, get out of here, man. They're mine. Thanks. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Back to this muddy lane McQueen on the back. You have some of the same stuff that we've been talking about. Poor old pushover probably canceled. And yeah, that would be the first canceled item in a while. Although some people say that tractor was canceled last year because he was on the card backs and didn't get released some people think that that was for tractor with tire i'm not really sure i think the first one's accurate according to trunk fresh green 34 he's a pretty reliable dude all right here we have none other than the saber tooth pity pit stop asaurus look at this absolute menace this guy just seems like an annoying he seems like one of them it's like a prehistoric squirrel you know just always annoying just trying to like grab a nut i don't know he just kind of gives off that vibe but he is really cool i do wish the forks were a little bit darker because they look a little gray plastic cheapy whereas there they look like yeah this is <laughs> this is sharp not to be messed with but yeah super cool i did already do my review of him but i just haven't posted it yet so that's why he's loose here and yeah very excited about this character i would probably be interested in buying multiple of him so that i can make an army of pit sources yeah, just a really unique character. Comes with the rock tire as well. Shouldn't be super hard to find, of course, in case G, then in case J. So really shouldn't be too much of an issue. On the back here, we got some really interesting stuff like Rumbler McQueen and the West Flanapis, who's in case J. Of course, you have Kelly Beanbright, May Pillar Derev, who we've talked about, Gearston Marshall, who's in just a ton of cases and is basically like the... <laughs> mascot of the 2023 mainline because he was the first new character and he's been in many many cases many many formats because he's now in a two-pack with nile speed cone with the accessories so yeah there's that let's move on to the tokyo mater goods here shall we so we here we have ito san now i actually found this one this one in particular i'm holding before the kelly beam bright incident i got just oh my god so many remnants are as in <laughs> lack thereof of other good stuff i just i don't know it was really picked over the only two cars that i bought i think were like ito san and oh man what did i buy i don't even remember the other car i bought probably like a nothing car yeah ito san was really like the only <laughs> recognizable remnant from case g but yeah it seems like they're only doing these tokyo mayor cars in this case at least at this moment. Obviously, we're getting Kabuto, Kabuto, Kabuto with Flames later, but I'm not sure if Ido, Patoka, and Drift Party Mater will pop up again. Drift Party Mater is in a two pack with Dragon McQueen, so there's that. It would have been cool to get artwork for these guys, but I'm not even sure if artwork for Ido here and Patoka exists. So I do understand why they did this. This is what they've always done, whether it be 2010 or 2013 or 2014 or 2015 when they release cars tunes you get the artwork of the mater that that tune focuses around so not too surprising but at least for the kabuto kabuto ninja two pack 
there both artworks are shown. So that's pretty cool. It does have Assi and Tokyo Mather up here, which is really nice. Bring in some love back to the now decade plus old shorts. And yeah, I will be reviewing these variants because they are kind of different. Now I love, love, love the background on these. Not only does it show you the classic Cars Tune logo, which just brings back so many memories. Wonderful to see that in action here, but it also has a specific Tokyo background, albeit from Cars 2, not Tokyo Mater, but still great. And then you have Potoka, Drift Party Mater, and Edo Sand. So very perfect timing because all of them are in the same case. So if you miss a couple, you know, and you're not clued in, you know what you're needing to look for, right? So I love this. Love the background on this, although the front artwork is a little lackluster. Really a fan of what they did here on the back. And yeah, the same here applies for Mr. Potoka, who's probably, I don't know, he might be the best of the bunch. I think police cars are always going to be a little bit more desirable, especially, yeah, I mean, people just have a hankering for police cars. In the Hot Wheels community, I know police cars are pretty popular. So yeah, I'll be opening up this guy. He's not on the best of card. And honestly, he is such an underrated release. I remember when I first found Potoka back in 2010 at a Walmart that no longer exists. So kind of sad, but yeah, that was a good day when I found Potoka. I remember exactly where I found him too. So with my mom, it was a good day. It was a good day, man. So yeah, I do like his stock image a lot. I like that expression. Hopefully it looks as good loose when we open them up. And then of course we have Drift Party Mater who's very heavy because the front and the back are die-cast metal. I'm not sure that the original Chinese version is like that. So we will find out if the back half is plastic on that one. But this guy looks good too. We'll see how clear those decals are when we open them up. Yeah, don't be fooled here. This is the full-on Tokyo Mater and then Drift Party Mater. It's always been a weird name to me. <laughs> it's always been a weird name. Like, what truly is a drift party? Are they referring to the party at the end when he's celebrating? Because he is like this when he's celebrating at the end. Is I mean, of course, he loses. I mean, let's talk about what he lost here. He loses a whole bunch of stuff. He loses, like, all this trim, his hood, a side view mirror. He uses his whole wing and spoiler back here that covers his towing cables. I mean, the guy just gets stripped down after getting shot out of the <laughs> pipe or whatever. And so, yeah, basically damaged Tokyo Mater is what we're looking at here, but they probably wanted to give him a better name. And so that's why they call him Drift Party Mater. But it really, truly is damaged Tokyo Mater. And I would have loved that they put like the oil stains on the side of him because he is caked. I mean, there's a lot of oil on this guy when he's racing up the Tokyo Tower. Like I think his whole back here is almost black. So that's actually a pretty cool custom idea for sometime in the future. I would like that for sure. Because, yeah, this is definitely more of the party version when he's cleaned up. Because, yeah, he's racing up that Tokyo Tower with Kabuto. I mean, he is dark in the back portion because of all the oil and the grease from the tarmac. All right, and then here we have Rumbler, Road Rumbler Lightning McQueen. Now, we've talked about him many times here from Case J, and I reviewed him. So, I'm going to keep this brief, but I do think this is the best McQueen variant they've done so far. And that includes Deputy cave road trip whatever yeah i'm a huge fan i love the artwork he looks so intense although he doesn't really give off that vibe in the episode he looks great and yeah the plastic parts are nice they stay on great unlike the disney store version on the back here we get a sneak peek at the upcoming breaker boggs who is not from cars on the road but actually cars 3 is one of the thunder hollow pities so a little disappointing that they botched that but hey, I think that'll be the only one this year that they botch in terms of the card backs. And they might also have botched Randy because I've seen their promotional image, stock images of him on the Cars on the Road packaging and also on regular packaging. So we'll see what ends up happening with him. But yeah, you also have Wes Flanapis, cool. Cryptid Buster Mater, who's in case H, the next case, and J, the case after that. So yeah, I love that they're always showing something new on these card backs and changing it up. Whereas last year, it got really stagnant toward the end of the year. They'd only show stuff from the beginning of the year, and they didn't update the card backs. And it seems like this year, they have been. So that's really good news. Something that just shows that they're paying a little bit more extra attention to the marketing. 
And then here is my personal highlight from this case right now because I had not found her yet, did not have her at all, and I found her in the store, and to me that's special. Truly, guys, like if I find something that I don't already have in a store, means a lot to me. Now, granted, I found many, many racers that I didn't already have, the three packs, and those are a little different. They're easier to find. So this is just, I'll always remember this moment, and as crazy and cliche as this sounds, I mean... I truly now am a big fan of Kelly Bean Bright, the Volkswagen bug clown. I'm not a big fan of her eyes, though, so we'll see when I bust her open here in a couple days. But yeah, she looks good. Again, on the back, similar stuff. We do have Claire Gunzer, the clown that came out in the last case, case F, making an appearance there. But yeah, I will be reviewing her very, very soon. I figured, you know, a lot of people have been asking me about the review when is that coming for Pit Stop Asaurus here? And I've had that recorded for weeks now, but I wanted, you know, it honestly wasn't super intentional, but the way things played out was like, like I said, very reverse chronological. It's like, all right, case J is available, let's get it done with. And then case H becomes available, let's get that done with. And I hadn't posted my Cryptid Buster Mater review yet, who was in case J. And so I thought to pair that with the H stuff because he technically debuts in the case H. So that worked out. And then that leaves me now with Pit Stop Asaurus, who technically debuted in case G. So we're going to pair him with Kelly and then the Tokyo Mater variant. So the only one that's technically out of order is Road Rumbler McQueen because he debuted in this case. And yet I reviewed him with all the J stuff. So yeah, that's kind of how my mind works a little bit. So you guys, the inner workings of my brain. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it as per usual. Obviously a little bit of a different video for these cases because simply I have not had access and there hasn't been anyone who has sold a full case G. And so I won't be unboxing that case even if I am able to buy it at a later date, but I won't be buying it because I already have all the stuff I need. And I don't want to have that many more duplicates. So that's where it stands. Thank you guys as always. I appreciate it. And I'll see you soon for another video. Bye now.